Hello everybody. Welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today uh, we're going to continue our Poor Man Spectrum Analyzer series where we're using a uh, broadband noise source and an RTL-SDR uh, in the place of a Spectrum Analyzer. Uh, previously we had uh, taken a look at a cavity duplexer, uh, which is a filtering device, and uh, it filters uh, or notches out a signal in both directions. Uh, what I have on the bench today is a uh, Sinclair dual ferrite isolator and uh, what an isolator will do for you is uh, it's a filtering device but it only filters in one direction. So uh, say that you have uh, this on an output of a uh, repeater and uh, you want maximum power transferred from the transmitter uh, or rather from the, uh, the whatever duplex you're using out to your antenna but uh, any returning signal on your transmit frequency you don't want to go back into uh, your power amplifier uh, so if you have a uh, high SWR or uh, nearby signal that's uh, co-channel or on the same frequency uh, you don't want that going back into your PA uh, to prevent damage to the PA uh, and also to uh, prevent some other issues. So, uh, what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to hook my RTL SDR to the output of my noise source. And the reason that we're doing this is so that we can uh, set relative mode. So, I've already set the frequency. Uh, this is a 1.25 centimeter or 220 megahertz uh, isolator or circulator and so uh, I've set my range to uh, 200 megahertz to 240 megahertz I've already hit set range so I'm gonna go ahead and hit relative mode and let it run for at least a few cycles uh, on spectrum the larger the amount of uh, bandwidth that you have selected the larger the frequency range, the longer it takes to cycle. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and hit set relative and you'll see it flatten out at about 0 dB. Okay, perfect. So what I'll do now is disconnect the RTL SDR from the output of the noise source and I will move it to the terminals on the isolator. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm connecting the RTL SDR to the input terminal and I'm going to connect the signal source to the output terminal and what that'll show us is that we uh, have filtering action and that uh, we're filtering out a set of frequencies so give me just a moment here to get connected there we go now you can see that we have uh, some fairly deep filtering action uh, starting at about 203 megahertz it starts to drop off uh, reaches uh, the bottom of the notch at about 214 uh, reaches the other side of the notch at about 224 and then uh, it starts back up and by about uh, 228 it's uh, back to normal and so what this would do uh, on this circulator there are uh, two small dummy loads connected. It just takes whatever signal it's notching out and it dumps it into those dummy loads. So, let me disconnect from this isolator and I'll turn the isolator around so the RTL SDR is on the output and the signal generator is on the input. So give me just a second here. Things are going to look a little uh, noisy here for a second as I connect terminals. Alright, and so now I'm connected. And as you can see, there's no notch uh, because all the signal is being passed through directly to the output terminal. So, uh, this is much like a duplexer in that it will filter out a signal, but it's different from a duplexer in that uh, it only does that in one direction uh, whereas a duplexer will filter out a signal in both directions so uh, that's going to be it for uh, this episode I just wanted to show the difference between a uh, an isolator or circulator 
and a uh, cavity duplexer. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Uh, I hope that you found this informative, and uh, I also hope that you have a great day. Thanks for watching.